thank you to the Tokyo family, to Lexi Hudson, and to everybody who's taken a moment to hear this conversation, um, which promises to be a special one, um, not least of all because uh, we are conducting this, uh, in the case of Alexandra and the Tocquevilles, uh, on site uh, at the Tocqueville Chateau uh, in France, and you will hear more about the setting for this conversation, I imagine, as we proceed. But I wanted to offer some short remarks uh, just to start us off in the direction of understanding why it is this conversation is important. Because there is a way in which holding this dialogue resuscitates an ancient tie in the context of the American relationship between this country where I sit in and the country where our friends speak to us from. And the context of that connection uh, is illustrated for us historically in the tremendously enriching influence that one Frenchman had on the American understanding of itself, of ourselves as Americans. And that is the contribution of Alexis de Tocqueville, the ancestor of the individuals we are looking at on this, uh, in, in the sofa on your Zoom screen, um, <clears throat> the author of Democracy in America. I have a friend who is a dean of a school of public policy um, and, uh, and a wonderful scholar and uh, historical thinker, thinker of civil society, who remarked to me on the great and poetic irony of the fact that so many of the great social commentaries on the culture and character of American life come to us by way of individuals who are not, not themselves born American, Foremost among these and foremost uh, in the minds of many scholars and historians among all social commentators uh, on American cultural and civic life um, is Alexis de Tocqueville. Uh, he is understood by many as being the first modern political scientist, the first man to understand modern mass society, uh, described as a genius of perception uh, and somebody whose genius lied in observing uh, the discrete nuances that inform the emerging character of a young people, looking at both the perils and promises of democracy as it evolved in American society, and being able to reference and frame and analyze the American experience, the budding American experience, against the backdrop of his own personal understanding of European society and the French struggle for democracy and freedom and all the perils within which that history had proceeded. But Alexis de Tocqueville, in offering a great analysis of the peculiarities of American democratic society, did so from the vantage point of his individual experience, his individual genius, an experience and a genius formed in a time and place in his upbringing uh, that should cause us to wonder about the man as an individual, uh, about the man as somebody who existed um, in a moment in time which shaped the ultimate trajectory of democracy uh, in North America and in Europe. Somebody who captured this moment uh, in his analyses and his understanding of the emerging democratic world and the emerging American nation. And so it is a great privilege for us to be able to hear more about who Alexis de Tocqueville was as a man, as a human being, as a person in a moment in time. And we could ask for no one better to shine a light on this subject um, than the Tocqueville family who sits here with us today. And so this conversation, I am pleased to say, will be guided and shepherded by my dear friend, uh, friend and partner and colleague um, of, of Braver Angels, curator of civic renaissance, scholar, woman of letters, uh, and again, dear friend of mine, Alexandra Hudson. Lexi, go ahead, carry us into the time. And thank you for doing it. Thank you so much, John, for those thoughtful reflections to frame our conversation and also for the very kind words. Um, it's, it's my absolute privilege to, to be here with the Tocqueville that I'd like to introduce right now. I am here with Jean Guillaume, who is the uh, fifth generation nephew of Alexis de Tocqueville. Uh, Alexis de Tocqueville himself did not have uh, children that were, we know of or that we're in touch with or aware of today. <laughs> Um, but we, but we, um, um, so, and, and, and Jean Guillaume is also a, a lawyer for Jones Day, uh, a Washington, D.C. based uh, law firm. And he's also the chairman of the Tocqueville Foundation, which we will explore later in this conversation. So thank you for being here. And we're also here with his wife, Stephanie de Tocqueville. 
who was a, an executive in the banking industry for a number of years um, before she de dedicated her life to the work of the Tocqueville Foundation, as well as raising their four children uh, together. So thank you, Jean-Guillaume and Stephanie for, for being here. I wanted to mention quickly that uh, just for being a part of this conversation, we are actually giving away a, um, a four volume edition of Democracy in America published by the Liberty Fund. So thank you to the Liberty Fund for, for donating a, a copy of, of Tocqueville's incredible work. Um, that's in, it's, it's basically an encyclopedia of Tocqueville embedded in a translation of Tocqueville. It's, it's a wonderful work of scholarship. And how you get entered to win a copy is to tweet about this event. So if you're on social media, um, uh, Ibrahim, or, or Elizabeth will share uh, the Tocqueville's, uh, the Tocqueville Foundation uh, social media handle, as well as Brave Angels uh, social media handle. And please um, do do tweet about the event and share your thoughts and reflections, what you what you like about what you're what you're learning. And afterwards, we will select a winner from that, uh, from from those that tweet about the event. So, um, and I'll mention that throughout to to remind you to 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 tweet and share about share your thoughts about the event. Um, so it's it's incredibly amazing and, and worth having this conversation today about Tocqueville because some might say we're um, many are questioning. Uh, well, first of all, <laughs> Tocqueville's work is arguably the best work on both America and democracy, mm -hmm. and many today are questioning both, <laughs> both America <laughs> and democracy. Uh, and so it's worth revisiting this, this seminal work, this incredibly thoughtful and astute observation about um, both America and democracy. Um, and, and of course, he came to America in 1831 skeptical, a little bit dispositionally skeptical of, mm -hmm. of, of the democratic project. And we're gonna talk more about why that's the case, his family having suffered from <laughs> the democratic the French Revolution. Um, and, but he, he generally liked a lot of what he saw in America. That, that's part of why Americans love uh, Tocqueville, that he has some really favorable observations, mm -hmm. while also mm -hmm. some critical observations mm -hmm. as well. And he was writing for, his native Frenchman, thinking, what can we learn from this, this democratic project in America? What can we, uh, how can we take the best of, of, of what's working in America and also kind of mitigate the, the potential excesses and extremes and, and weaknesses and fragilities of, of democracy as well. Um, and and uh, one, one insight from Tocqueville that is particularly important to me in my work on civility, I'm working on my, my, my book on civility, mm -hmm. is, is how he knew that regimes didn't exist in a vacuum. They weren't just political institutions, that they were inextricably bound from the character uh, and mores and habits and norms and character of a people that mm -hmm. sustained it, which is why he was so observant about all of those things, about, mm -hmm. about our norms, about our mores, about civil associations, things that were not directly related to politics as well. And of course, uh, his famous observations about what made de American democracy work was our civic associations, our, our vibrant associational life that um, was this necessary buttress to, uh, to, to our institutions. And, and, uh, um, and uh, for as part of a, a research project I undertook as part of my Novak Fellowship, uh, I was able to discover that contrary to what a lot of people think today, a lot of people argue that American civil society is in crisis, that we're not, you know, bowling together anymore. We're not, we're not joining anymore. Um, and that's a threat to American democracy. But I researched examples of during the pandemic, people rising to the occasion and helping those in need and, and spontaneously, you know, doing things and filling needs that no government program could ever fill. And that, that gave me a little bit of reason for hope that maybe, maybe Tocqueville's uh, observations about American civic association is still alive and well today and maybe there's still reason to hope for both civic life in America and democracy. So those are a few reasons why I'm so thrilled to be here with you and to be talking about this, this important legacy and uh, and life and and I'd love to start by by um, uh, talking about where we are right now. What it tell us about this this beautiful property that I had the privilege of, of touring a little bit this morning and, and the chateau and, and a little bit of the property's story. Well, thank you very much, Alexandra. Should I call you Lexi or Alexandra? Whichever. Whichever. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. No, thank you very much for uh, organizing this, uh, this very nice event. Uh, it, it's our pleasure really to uh, welcome you here uh, in Tocqueville, in the place where Alexi wrote uh, Democracy in America. 
and to uh, welcome also all our uh, all our auditors. Uh, so welcome to all. It is great to to be able to uh, to chat and. Uh, and Alexis Tocqueville. We are great fans of Alexis Tocqueville, but <laughs> no, so that's no surprise. But, you know, beyond that, I think he's worth, uh, as, as you said, reflecting on, right? because he was, a, he was a wonderful, a wonderful person and a very thoughtful uh, uh, writer. Uh, so here we, as you, as you said, uh, Alexandra, we are in, uh, in a little place in Normandy, close to the sea. We are between the sea and the meadows and cows. Uh, it's a very uh, nice place. It's an old uh, chateau that was built in the first part of it was built in the 15th century. Uh, and it was um, exchanged uh, between the, the, the family who built uh, this first chateau of Tocqueville and the, the Tocqueville family in the mid 17th century. So there was an exchange and since the 17th century, the Chateau de Tocqueville has always been in the Tocqueville family. And the, it was a place where, as, as I said, Alexis wrote here most of his writings, including Democracy in America. And we are the good fortune to have all his papers or nearly all his papers here. Uh, as I was telling you, um, the, 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 the castle burned uh, 65 years mm. ago. My grandfather to finance part of the rebuilding uh, sold the final manuscript of a democracy in America to mm. the University of Yale. Mm. So it is now well kept and very well preserved at the Beinecke Library, mm. where I had the chance to, to see it a, a few years ago. So Alexis was very attached to this place because it was quiet. It was uh, where his ancestors and family li lived. It is where he wanted to, uh, to write and live. He, he was not brought up here, but he lived most of his adult life between Paris uh, and here. And as you might know, uh, he died in uh, 1859 in Cannes mm. uh, out of the tuberculosis that he caught uh, in, in a very difficult time of his trip to, to the US. And uh, he was saying, you know, so he was there for health reasons and he was saying you know i'm, I'm missing the skies of uh, Tocqueville mm -hmm. with because of blue sky all over and uh, here it's more nuanced you know sometimes <laughs> we have blue sky sometimes we have clouds yeah. like tonight didn't so, like the Cote des Eros, too too monolithic too blue for him he wanted it, it, that clouds it, it, and it, it, the, it, <laughs> the nuance it, it, that's exactly. great so, uh yeah. on the topic of the uh archives you have that you have of Tocqueville I'd love to show if you um both um two, two yeah, things to share yeah, so yeah you find the original working paper of the so you have all his notes and and Everything that he has to, right, has so, to prepare his book. Amazing. Amazing. The original notes that went into his Democracy in America. So the, incredible. this is the first manuscript of Democracy in America. Amazing. Uh, that he uh, handwritten. You want to show that? Just hand, so handwritten. Yeah. Incredible. And, and let's, uh, Stephen, you, know, you want to show the way he wrote. There, there was no uh, there was no computers at that time. <laughs> so you might see from a little closer here if you see. A little bit. The kind of he wrote on he, one he wrote, side yeah. and then annotated the other. other. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. It's a good way to prepare. And this morning, uh, Stephanie took uh, my husband and our son and I up to the tower where all their archives were kept, and we went to the very first kind of binder like this one and saw his very first letter ever written, or at least the first one that we that is in the possession of the collection from 1805 he was five years old and wrote a letter to his teacher. oh 1810 yeah. he, he was five years old right he was five years old and wrote a letter to his teacher and it's like you know this cute chicken scratch that you see from any <laughs> kindergartner and it's like that's amazing yeah, that's, that's right. amazing yeah. and then one other thing that we have or that you have in the collection is this is the first uh french edition of uh democracy in america in yeah, not 1841 because that's the english 38 right 35, 35 okay 35, 35 yeah. which is just extraordinary do you know how many we, of these exist well not not very many right uh, the initial drawing was uh 500 uh, wow. copies because the the printer was not so sure that it would be a success so um he 
printed 500 copies, which went out in uh, 24 hours. It was hours, a bestseller right away. Yeah. Very yeah. Well. Yeah. Uh, and then there was a second, third, and many, many editions uh, very quickly afterwards. But this one is, this one is pretty rare. Amazing. Incredible. <laughs> um, so tell us about the context, the family history that undergirded Tocqueville and his life and his thinking. He did not himself live through the French Revolution. He didn't see that firsthand, but there was generational trauma there. Tell us about that, the fam how, how your family suffered uh, by the French Revolution, and, and a little bit more about the French Revolution. Right, how uh, right. So, so yeah, Alexis was born in, uh, in 1805, the third of three uh, boys, a uh, small one. Um, and from a, a traditional uh, uh, French aristocratic family, fairly traditional. Uh, he was traditional, but at the same time, uh, there was real modernity in the family because his uh, grandfather, Bernard, his father, Hervé, where uh, his father was a, a prefet from uh, to, 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 to King uh, Louis XVIII, uh, and had read all the uh, philosophers of the 18th century, so they were enlightened uh, people, if, if we could say so. So Tocqueville, um, was brought up, as I said, not here, uh, in, in another uh, property that the uh, the family had in Normandy, closer to, to Paris, uh, and with a very strong link with his father, uh, who was a very uh, cultured uh, person. Uh, he followed his father in, uh, was a prefect in, in different places, including Metz, and as he was the only one following the, his father because his two brothers were, were elder, he would spend his time reading like all the books of the libraries mm. of Tocqueville, of the Prefecture of Metz, of the Prefecture of Beauvais, uh, and so on as a, as a, as a very young kid. Um, his parents uh, had been very traumatized by the, uh, the French Revolution because they were due to go to uh, the guillotine to be beheaded uh, the day after what we call the Neuf Thermidor, which mm. is the day where Robespierre fell Amazing. Uh, and was uh, was, uh, was was beheaded he was at this beheaded. time. Robespierre was beheaded. Robespierre was beheaded. Robespierre was beheaded. So oh, wow. <laughs> when when Robespierre fell, uh, they opened all the jails, and Hervé was like twenty five, and his uh, hair was already completely white. Oh, my word. Uh, uh, and Louise, his mother, uh, who was the uh, the, the, the the granddaughter of of Malzerbe. I will come back to Malzerbe in a second. Uh, was always completely was always uh, quite depressed for her whole life because wow. of, uh, they the had trauma. Been so, so, yes. so yes. shock. Yeah, yeah, a, a, a big shock. Um, and most of uh, Alexis' uh, relatives, uncles, aunts were beheaded, unfortunately, mm. uh, during the revolution. And, and I think that we will probably come back to that later. But I think that what is quite remarkable about Alexis is that he he managed to draw himself out of this context mm -hmm. and have a, a really objective look on the, on the French Revolution, on the new regime, mm. on uh, the nascent uh, democracy. Uh, and this is quite remarkable because many people from his upbringing ju just, you know, are so shocked that they hated the, the new word. And, uh, but he managed mm. to be very objective uh, uh, on this. Um, I mentioned uh, Malzerbe, uh, who is probably less, uh, less well known in the, uh, in the US than he is in France. Uh, Malzerbe was a great humanist. Um, he was uh, a minister and advisor to King Louis XV and hmm. King Louis XVI. Advised, uh, he was charged uh, to uh, issue two reports on uh, the freedom of religion. One, one on the freedom of religion for Protestant people, and one for the, on the freedom of religion for Jewish people. Mm. Each mm -hmm. time advising the king, of course, to, to be open and to let people practice. Is this Louis Torres? Uh, no, no, Louis the, 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 the 15th, okay. uh, okay. uh, uh, okay. and Louis the 16th. Okay. So, uh, and we have those reports here. Uh, wow. And Alexis was extremely admirative of his great grandfather, wow. who had an enormous influence of him. And I think that the, the humanist side of Malzerbe it has been transmitted to uh, Alexis. Um, so may, maybe one word on the, on the French Revolution. <clears throat> as, as you might know, uh, Alexis wrote as well uh, 
uh, you know, after democracy in America, his other great book was uh, L'Ancien Régime et la Révolution, The Old Regime and Revo the Revolution, mm -hmm. where he analyzed all the uh, uh, deep reasons uh, of the French Revolution. And wh what he used to say is that the Re French Revolution had already occurred before 1989, because all, all the uh, reasons and grounds for the revolution were there, uh, whether big economic, the centralization of the mm -hmm. power by the monarchy, it was all there bef before it blew out in mm. 1989. And obviously, he was very, th this is one of the reasons he was so interested in the US is to see because the French Revolution was, I don't know if we, we can say that she was a daughter, but she was influenced, of course, by the American Revolution. Right. Of course, and you, you know, this is one of the reasons why he uh, wanted to go to the US as well. That's so interesting that you mentioned his, influ his influence <clears throat> by his great great grandfather, who had written these two reports for, mm -hmm. for Louis Pons about um, religious toleration yes. of, of, of yeah. Catholics yeah. And, and, and Protestants and, and Jewish and Jew, people. And, and, Jew, people. Yeah, and Jewish people. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. How do you think that reflects itself in democracy in America, his admiration of religious toleration that he got from his, his grandfather, well, his great-grandfather? Yeah, I, I think uh, Alexis was very um, interested in, uh, in, in the, the religion uh, matter, in, in religious matters. Uh, it, it, is a, it still remains a question uh, whether he was a believer or not. Uh, he, uh, one of the, you know, the friends and professors who is a very good TV specialist uh, told, that, told that to my mother because she, just before she died, because she thought that it would, it would be nice for her to hear that. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. He told me afterwards that he still had some doubts about it. <laughs> uh, anyway, he, he, no, he was a, a, a very interested uh, in the religious uh, uh, movement and the uh, and he used to say that there are there were two uh, ways to 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 lead a people mm. long term. One one is uh, patriotism, and the second is religion. Mm. And he was he he thought it, he always thought it was a pity that uh, the French Revolution was in a way happened against Catholicism, mm. contrary to the U.S. Revolution, which. Uh, you know, had, had nothing on, on the contrary, which uh, the, the American revolutionaries were religious people. Mm. Um, and so he was very interested in, in that. And I think that he uh, was interested in comparing these two, uh, these two contrary mm. uh, happenings. My husband and I have been traveling across France, as you know, before coming here to Normandy. And there have been times where we've been uh, at a certain historical site, for example, uh, the Abbe de Fontevrault, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. where Eleanor of Aquitaine and um, Henry Plantagenet uh, were buried, and their their resting spot, they were their their bon during the French Revolution, mm -hmm. their their bones were taken out from the crypt and scattered over and never yeah. recovered, and that yeah. happened so many with so many incredible historical yeah. figures, with Blaise Pascal and and his uh, uh, in Paris, and no, no, you are absolutely and, right, and it made me angry and frustrated, like no, no, it I, was just deconstructing, it was violent, yes. it was rage, it was, it was rage, and I, I, I guess we will come back to that in in a few minutes, but this is one of the things that. Well, in revolutions, you always have rage. Yes. But this is also uh, a uh, uh, not the, due to the fact that it was a failure to uh, uh, not to have a smooth uh, transition. It was a failure not uh, due to the failure not to be able to debate and 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 to dialogue. And 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 Tocqueville yes. uh, traveled a lot to England as well um, after the U.S. And he he was always struck that. Uh, England managed to have a, you know, a much smoother transition over the mm. 18th, 19th century. Uh, well, they had a revolution, but uh, they beheaded a king, but that was much <laughs> earlier. <laughs> uh, so he, he was impressed to see how, uh, you know, society managed to evolve mm -hmm. without the, 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 the these breaks that you had uh, in the French history. There was a break yeah. also uh, caused by the fact that all the aristocrats were in, in Versailles, so they didn't have any link. Well, it was, the... it was due to the fact that uh, I think the, uh, the, the, the British aristocracy 
uh, was more open and had been smarter than probably the French aristocracy in that they opened their, themselves to uh, to newcomers, to mm. industrialists, to, uh, uh, you know, financial people. Uh, and uh, that created a sort of a consensus and a smoother evolution of- uh, And they stayed all over the country, they didn't all, uh, in that one place. Yeah, that, that, that's another effect of the centralization that we're talking about. It's true that Louis, Louis XIV, Louis XIV, in order to control the, 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 the great aristocrats that were otherwise, would have been fighting against him, mm. just brought all of them to Versailles and they, they were all in this chateau, mm. uh, having fun and uh, uh, but I think but getting quite tour, get, really getting tour. quite bored at the same time. Yeah, with, that so was in the thing with the country somehow disappeared. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. and, and exactly. And so there was no communication mm. anymore. Yeah, mm. it's it's amazing how uh, you can just Google Tocqueville quotes or pick up democracy in America and open to almost any page and mm. find something that seems like it could have been written yesterday. Yeah. Like it's, it's a timeless work. It was written. No, yeah. almost 200 years ago, mm -hmm. but it just, it speaks it to us today. And That's I'm true. wondering to, to both of you as, mm -hmm. you know, as family members and as, as also students of his work, um, what are some ideas of Tocqueville's today that still speak to you and you think are, are relevant? Well, as you said, there are many because he's, mm -hmm. uh, he's you know, what he describes 200 years ago uh, is, is still completely true and still okay. describes and can still help to analyze what's going on right yes. now. And I guess the first point is that Alexis de Tocqueville, um, as you said, what he used to say, he, he said, you know, when he went to the US, I saw the US, but I, I saw much for, I, beyond that, I saw democracy in movement. Mm. Uh, and that, that this, is, this is very true. And it, it is quite impressive when you think that he was a young king of 20, uh, he was 25 years Amazing. old when he traveled. You know, uh, I lived in the US uh, uh, at, uh, I, I was older than this and, uh, you know, I was a lawyer, but I was living in New York and had fun at the same time. <laughs> I, was, I was far up from having his maturity mm -hmm. at uh, 25. Um, and he, what he used to say is, so basically, as I said, he wanted to describe uh, the, the democratic phenomenon, democracy movement, uh, and analyze the, uh, the, 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 uh, the ad advantages, the forces, and the fragilities of, mm. of, of democracy. And I think that studying Tocqueville is uh, essentially interesting. The, the, the most interesting time is when democracy is in crisis, mm -hmm. uh, as it is now mm -hmm. uh, in many countries. Um, so, so there, there, there are many ways we could uh, answer your question, but perhaps two uh, observations. The first one is that something he was very struck by was, uh, you know, al already at this time, but uh, it's still exactly the case now, is uh, the disconnection between the elites and the people, mm -hmm. uh, which was already, uh, which was already very. Uh, uh, very much uh, the, the, was already very much the case in, in 1848 uh, when and, and this is what uh, the, the reason why the regime of uh, King Louis Philippe fell, mm. uh, the, the, what we call the Monarchie de Juillet uh, mm. in, in France, because there was a complete disconnection uh, between the elite and the people. And there is a very famous speech that he made at the, the, the French National Assembly, maybe his most famous. Uh, speech, uh, and that was in uh, January 1848. And everybody was, you know, very uh, comfortable, and, uh, and 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 nobody had seen the 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 the, the problems coming. And you know, he uh, uh, he was very strong about saying, uh, you know, you are completely unconscious. Uh, you think that you are uh, in. Uh, you know, economically, the country is economically strong and uh, is doing well, but due to this crisis between the elite and the people, uh, uh, the, you know, things are going to get worse very quickly. Mm -hmm. And he ended saying, we are all sitting on a volcano. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. And one month later, the, the revolution of uh, 1488 broke. He saw it. Yeah. He saw, he he saw it coming. Wow. Wow. Uh, and it is still very much the case, <clears throat> in my view, that obviously in the US, in, uh, at least in the US and in Europe, there is a disconnection between the, the elites uh, and, and the people. Mm. Uh, this is a re reason why uh, President Trump was elected in the US. Mm. This is a reason why we had the Yellow Vest uh, movement here. Mm. This is a reason why uh, you, you have uh, these regimes in Eastern Europe, which we call the illiberal democracies. Mm -hmm. I don't know if, how that sounds in English, but uh, in Eastern Europe, because that fosters populism, that fosters hatred against against the elites, against institutions. Mm. There, there is a, a very strong distrust of the uh, institutions. Um, and I think this is very much the, 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 the situation in which we are. Mm. Uh, this also, uh, you, you know, when you see what happened in the US uh, last January, mm. the, January 6, uh, Tocqueville would have been so shocked to, mm. to see that. But, 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 you know, this is something he had in his mind. Uh, uh, another point maybe we could uh, we, we could discuss for a minute is um, individualism. Hmm. Uh, individualism, you, you, you know the, the, the balance he, he was trying to make between liberty and equality, uh, uh, saying that uh, equality is what people want, uh, whether it is in, in, in liberty or, 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 or in slavery. Hmm. Um, and individualism is a, uh, you know, is a danger because, uh, especially in, 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 in this uh, world of equality, because something that Tocqueville observed is that the smaller the differences between the people become, the, the, the more um, in, 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 insupportable, uh, the, the, the more unbearable mm -hmm. uh, they, they, they become. Uh, and so that, uh, and also linked to this distrust of the institution we are talking about, people just withdraw the, uh, in themselves, uh, in their families, mm -hmm. and, and you, you know what matters be, be, becomes their individual interest. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't care about any longer about, uh, uh, about uh, the general good. Uh, and this is, you know, if you don't have the, the counterweights and the checks and balances to preserve liberty, mm -hmm. and we can, we can come back to that, then you, you, you get uh, despotism. Yes, uh, the soft you, despotism. So, so, yeah, soft despotism yeah. or more, uh, but it's, it's not even soft despotism now because, uh, you, you know, with the, uh, as we said, people, you know, have their own ideas in their little individual circles and they uh, force their ideas on social networks. Mm -hmm. uh, nobody nobody uh, checks any longer if, uh, you know, it, it is a factual reality mm -hmm. or, or, or not. Mm -hmm. uh, and that polarizes, you know, obviously, the, the, the public debate. And uh, I, I think that's, you know, part of the reason this individualism uh, and, and this um, incapacity of, of, of gathering on, on, you know, dreams or projects or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, that 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 can create violence very very mm -hmm. very quickly. Uh, I it happened in the U.S. It happened in Europe. It, it happens in in Asia. What? Yes. Uh, you know, in China, in Hong Kong. That, for other reasons, but it's. Uh, it's not a stable word we are living in. No. And that counterbalance, he observed that uh, to individualism, that to the excesses of the individualism and and uh, in American democracy was uh, civic associations. That that is what brought out the communal side of of us and countered the negative effects of excessive individualism of just focusing only on on ourselves. The mm -hmm. fact that we. We're in we're in civic associations that we, we did we did things together. He made the amazing observation that in France and England, he said mm -hmm. people wait for the government. If there's a problem, they wait for the government to fix it. They think it's the government's job. And in America, he said they just joined. They just do it together. Yeah. They see a problem and they're like, yeah. hey, let's, let's get this done. And how that was the important factor, the, the counterbalance to you're, the you're, excess of the you're, you're absolutely right. And the key observation he made in the U.S. what you know, what we do at the Toby Foundation 
but because I think that it is his most important observation mm -hmm. is, is the role when he arrived. Uh, when he arrived in the US, it was in uh, 1831. Uh, the federal government was still weak. Even state governments were, were just pretty new. And so, so the communities had, had to uh, organize themselves. Uh, and uh, they, they would organize themselves for schools, for universities, for hospitals, for the fire squad, for... Mm -hmm. for and, and he saw the way civil society could take part mm -hmm. into the life of the community. Uh, and as you said, this was this was a main count, counterweight, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, that, that, that uh, and yeah, strongest counterweight uh, that that could uh, that could be found to uh, uh, to to uh, counterbalance equality. Uh, and and there is an interesting interesting concept that uh, Tocqueville reflected about, which is the concept of self-interest when understood. Yes. Uh, that, that you interest. might know exactly. Uh, exactly. and he said you know if, if the americans uh, americans like uh, citizen ngos companies get involved in in the life of the city mm -hmm. it is not necessarily uh, because they are all philanthropists mm -hmm. there are philanthropists but it's not all of them it's for their own interest well understood because mm -hmm. they know that if they want to succeed in their business they have to have a safe environment mm -hmm. And, and, and a safe context. And, and so they should devote a little bit of their time uh, to the common good, mm -hmm. to be able to success in their business. Mm -hmm. So the, the, you know, individual success and collective success are very entertaining. Right. Right. That's a very positive approach. Which yes. is, a, which is a, <laughs> an extremely positive exactly. approach. Exactly. Stephanie, I'd love to hear from you what, what ideas of Tocqueville's art that you think are most relevant today. And um, just to, to preface uh, this this question, mm -hmm. I, I remember um, you, you had a really insightful point last night where you shared about how he um, negotiated with his brother. He, on one hand, he was traditional. On the mm -hmm. other hand, he was progressive and how he balanced, kind of straddled the, the progressive deviation from tradition, but also tradition. Mm -hmm. And as an example, you said that um, he negotiated with his brother to inherit this estate as opposed to another one. He wasn't the oldest, so he wasn't set to get this one, but he, he wanted this one because he wanted to go into public office. He wanted to be kind of a politician, and this was the more stately, traditional uh, home, so, so a valued tradition, mm -hmm. yet he also married an English woman, which his family never accepted, right? That, that's very deviating from, from yeah, tradition. Okay. He, I, that was very insightful, I thought. Yeah, he was very independent. Um, yes. And uh, he met his Mary Motley, his uh, English Mary wife. Mary Motley, Mary Motley. Motley yes. exactly. An English lady who was a Protestant, I think, Yeah. Uh, older than him, and not really the criteria of the, of the family. So he met <laughs> her before going to the U.S., and during his trip in the US, he matured, and when he came back, he had decided to get married to, to her. Wow. We, which uh, was a very sort of step forward. Yes. Him. That, show, that shows that as, uh, he was very, as Stephanie said, very independent. Yes. And, 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 and very, uh, he was a free man. He was had his ideas, his mind, his direction. And, uh, yes. He was not going so easily influenced by. Uh, yeah. Even by his family. Yeah. yeah, and I think having seen all these uh, family catastrophes, where we uh, were getting back to, to Malzer, who defending the, the king, mm -hmm. and the king was beheaded, so he was beheaded too. The family, uh, and seeing all this, I think that he really fought his own personality mm -hmm. and decided to go his own way. Yeah, the, the, an anecdote on, on the, going back to Malzer. Malzer yes. was an old man when he defended the king, and uh, uh, so, and he was reproached by a number of people uh, saying Monsieur Malzer, how come you're a humanist you already def you always defend the, pe the people how can you defend this uh, tyrant and, uh, and he answered you know I've done enough to defend the people before the king so mm. now, which allows now me which now allows me to defend the king before the people mm. and this is a letter uh, we, we we have here as well and when you sacrifice um, your own life for your beliefs I think it gives you a lot of strength for your own choices yeah. That's what they came from. That's wonderful. Um, mm. Before before our conversation, Jean Guillaume, you mentioned something, uh, an insight that Tocqueville had, how he was concerned about democracy devolving into a tyranny of the majority. 
Hmm. Yet today you observe we're kind of experiencing a tyranny of the minorities, the kind of an inversion of, of Tocqueville's mm -hmm. officer. So mm -hmm. tell, tell us more about that, that insight you had. Yeah, I, I, well, I, I think it's, uh, um, it is the same logic, basically. Uh, it, it is, um, he called it the majority at that time, but it, it is the, 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 the power that a group of people, usually the majority, but not necessarily, mm -hmm. use in, in an excessive way on, on, the, on, on the other people. Uh, and, and we discussed, for we were discussing earlier, um, uh, Alexandra Di Olexi. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I like the way you say it in French. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Uh, the, 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 all the, the stories around the, the woke culture. Uh, the woke culture. Uh, yeah, and, mm -hmm. and the council culture. Uh, which I, I, I don't know if one can call this a minority because it now it irrigates. Uh, now it's maybe the majority. Uh, but, uh, it feels uh, like a it big is. part, yeah. at least, of the, of the, of the academic uh, world. And, and I think um, Alex Tocqueville would have been very uh, uneasy about that because mm. I, I guess for two, two, two reasons. The first one is that you cannot, um, you, you cannot erase your, your your history mm -hmm. uh, and and try to to uh, you, you know to initiate to, to infuse a, a completely new culture uh, uh, which you, you know the, the council culture was trying to do in a way with the st story of the statutes and uh, uh, you know and, and you cannot either uh, criticize the, the way some people behave earlier uh, with, with the criteria that you have now. Mm -hmm. Uh, for, for example, uh, Alexi, Alexi was criticized to, uh, to support the colonization of Algeria by France. He went to Algeria. He criticized the colonization? No, he, yeah, he did both. Okay. He, he support, after, well, he went to Algeria. He okay. was horrified of the way the French army was behaving and wow. the, 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 the Algerian people were treated. Uh, but you know, after reflection, he said, you know, we should not stop colonization. We should just change the way uh, it, it, it is conducted because the, the way it is conducted is not, is not acceptable. So, you know, he was a man of his time. Uh, it's easy now to say, but he should have said mm -hmm. uh, X, Y, Z and, mm -hmm. and so on. So, mm -hmm. uh, and, and the second uh, thing that uh, would have shocked him is probably the, the, the um, absence of uh, debate and dialogue in this. It, mm. It's very difficult to, 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 uh, to, to uh, talk about these uh, topics in, in whatever debate or conference, because mm. violence uh, pops us immediately. Mm. Okay. And this, this was not Alexis culture. Mm -hmm. We thought that uh, you, you, know, you could solve issues uh, by, by debating, dialoguing in good faith, so. Violence yeah. and, and silent and like silencing someone yeah. with the enemy of dialogue that wasn't dialogue and, and yeah. democracy requires the yeah. robust public yeah. discourse, the ro ro robust dialogue, so. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's why I think brain reaction to learn is very important because they really put mm -hmm. the two antagonists together. Yes, exactly. And there are very few places where you can actually speak to the other without confronting, right? just willing to speak. And that's also the purpose of our project organization. Excellent. To have people from different point of views get together, speak to each other, mm -hmm. not just throwing rotten things to each other, mm -hmm. but just debate uh, on, on very hot issues. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I think being with the Torah translation, with Braver Angels, or with Civic Renaissance, I think they are all places where you try to foster a uh, dialogue, Absolutely. which I think is really very much into the spirit, yeah. to be able to speak yeah. about the hot issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's ju just to finish on the question, your question, uh, Lexi, when you said, uh, you know, what would be topical from Togil thoughts here? He, <clears throat> I think he would have thought that uh, the, the fight for liberty is not uh, is not lost. Hmm. Uh, you, you can ask the question when you see what's going on in China, mm -hmm. in Russia, in Brazil, where all these rulers say, you know, the, the democracy that's the past. Mm -hmm. uh, it's weak. Uh, it doesn't protect you. We now we are going to uh, 
you know, initiate new regimes that will uh, bring uh, security, prosperity, mm -hmm. but at what cost? Uh, mm -hmm. At what cost? Uh, and I think that if you if you think a little further, uh, you can see that people, uh, on the long run, people will miss liberty. Mm -hmm. uh, if you see Tiananmen, if you see what's going on in Hong Kong, uh, if you see, uh, uh, you know, the demonstrations that uh, happen in Russia for uh, Navalny, like hundreds of people in the streets. So for the moment, it, it is counted. It is uh, under control. But how long is it going to, uh, to, to, you know, to last? It's, it's a question. And, and Tocqueville, uh, I, would I should think, would say, hey, guys, we have solutions, mm -hmm. which you mentioned, and the solutions are the role of civil society, mm -hmm. uh, the checks and balances, uh, the, the, the education, education is, yeah. is yeah. extremely important, educating people uh, to, to, to debate, to dialogue, dialogue. Yeah, exactly. to be able to speak without uh, you know, just uh, you know, fighting, fighting, yes. fighting each other. That's a very hopeful uh, yeah. note, I think, for our audience that despite how bleak things mm -hmm. seem sometimes mm -hmm. with with our democracies, with modern Western democracies, or just democracies in general, uh, it's all's not lost. Yeah, uh, because Tocqueville had, uh, had a high view of of the individual. Again, like he he thought that a, a regime was not just institutions; it was well, the citizenry as well, yeah, which with, gives each of yes. us a lot of agency to be a part of that of that solution. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that we we were talking about some of his intellectual influences. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned a lot of the Enlightenment thinkers, Montaigne, Montesquieu, Pascal, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, like Montesquieu especially had this conception of uh, the kind of character that is bred with a certain regime. So Montesquieu mm -hmm. said, in a monarchy, like in France, uh, it depends and breeds a culture of honor and kind of dignity, mm -hmm. whereas a democracy cultivates and breeds virtue in a citizenry and, depend, and, and in turn depends it on depends virtue. It depends on every, every and, people's culture. Exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah. and then uh, yeah. a tyranny cultivates and depends on fear yeah. in a citizenry yeah. as well. And I think that that framework he brought really brought over, talked a lot about, Tocqueville brought, talked a lot about the virtue, the civic virtue and the and, and the norm, yeah, norms and norms. It's a political history. culture. Yeah. I mean, the, the, one of the problems there in France is this, this culture of centralization. Mm. The deal was fought a lot. And, mm. uh, so I don't know when we will be able, it's not tomorrow that we'll be able to decentralize yes. in France. But yeah. that, that will, that's also a solution, uh, you know, a good thing. Exactly. Yeah. Let's say people really remain optimistic about democracy. Uh, yeah. yeah. That's important. That's a very important Yeah, thing. because he, yeah, one thing he believed firmly in is that uh, democracies are very re resilient. Yes. Very, very resilient in spite of crisis. Mm. So if you want to learn more about Tocqueville, you can win a copy, uh, your very own copy of Tocqueville's Democracy in America. This translation is published by the Liberty Fund, and you can uh, win a copy by following uh, the Tocqueville Foundation on Twitter and, 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 and tweeting about this event. So every, to every tweet is an entry into the contest, and we'll select a, a winner after um after this event today so um let's talk about the Tocqueville Foundation tell us what you do you started it you're the generation of Tocquevilles that started the foundation to promote mm -hmm. and perpetuate awareness of Alexis de Tocqueville's life and legacy so mm -hmm. tell us uh about the idea to start it with the with what what and, and what you're doing now to, to do that mm -hmm. okay um so, so as you said we are we are doing our best to promote uh, Alexis legacy in particular, uh, in terms of his uh, key observation, I was I was talking uh, earlier about, which is a role, the the key role of a vibrant civil society for a sound democracy, mm. and, and a sound political regime. And you know what is civil society? Civil society is uh, you and me, citizens, all of us. Uh, it is uh, NGOs and associations. Uh, Alexi used to say that uh, association is the mother of all sciences, mm. uh, and and corporations, the corporate world, financial mm. world, corporate corporate world. That this is civil society, and you know it it, it is. I think it's we are trying to uh, to send messages to, to to European countries. In the U.S., civil society is already as, as we are 
you know, talking earlier, civil society has always been a very important part mm -hmm. uh, of the political system, less in Europe, less in France. And we, so th this is our vision and mission is, is, you know, keep a sound and improve the political system uh, by promoting the role of, mm -hmm. of civil society. And there are three so, things that you Yeah, right? yeah. That. So we have, we have, uh, so it's, uh, we, we just started a few years ago. We uh, are in the process of gearing up uh, quite nicely. Um, mm -hmm. And we well, for, yeah, you should also say that this is, our DNA is obviously uh, European and American. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. Alexi was a bridge between uh, not only US and France, but the US and Europe. Mm. And this is really um, uh, our DNA. Yeah. So the first project is a conference that uh, we hold here. It's called the Tobi Conversation. Mm -hmm. It's like the, con the informal conversation we are having tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, and we invite <coughs> around 30 uh, leaders of the uh, political, economic, academic, journalistic mm -hmm. worlds, artistic as well. Uh, we lock them uh, <laughs> here for two days. There are worse uh, places to so be locked have, in. We, we have four round tables <laughs> with events. Uh, uh, and so that allows them to, uh, that allows quality, courteous debates. We are very careful to have people from, from, from different, mm -hmm. uh, you know, beliefs and mm -hmm. uh, convictions, uh, always in a courteous way. Uh, I think the, the 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 venue allows it mm -hmm. and favors it mm -hmm. uh, because it's under the auspices of uh, Uncle Alexis. Mm. Would be very uh, who, very who close. Was very, who's very very transpolitical in America. Mm -hmm. Everyone invokes Alexis de Tocqueville, left, right, Democrats, yeah. Republicans. Everyone talks about him and cites him. Mm -hmm. He has this sort of transpolitical aura and appeal because mm -hmm. he's just kind of. You know, yeah, essential just, Americana uh, is kind of what he what he writes about. So because he writes about uh, all his values are good. Values. Yes, that's yeah. right. Yeah. That's a great point. Uh, that's what yeah. allows us to have people from different political sides yes. that all okay to come here mm -hmm. and to discuss uh, very openly about different uh, subjects. Wonderful. Okay, so, so that that, that gathers around yeah. two hundred people. Okay. Of course, we had difficult. We we had to cancel it last mm -hmm. year, but we are redoing it next September. And with uh, the target, I mean, so we have a, a 200 participants and we really would like to uh, focus on the younger ones. Absolutely. Mm. Uh, you, the next generation the of next generation. readers. Yes. 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 Yeah. So for the your, conversation. Your generation. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. for the future conversations, you want to incorporate younger, a younger participant. Yeah. yeah. The, the, Excellent. The, yeah. Exactly. That's great. So that's one project. Uh, conversation. To okay. big conversation. We do that in, in partnership with the Figaro, which is a um, European uh, paper here and the Atlantic yes. Council. Okay. Excellent. Big US think tank. And the German Foundation. Also to have mm -hmm. the European. Yes, uh, and the German perfect. Foundation. Yeah. Okay. Uh, another project is the Tocqueville Challenge, where we Tocqueville Challenge. put together, we create teams of uh, with uh, an NGO. A, a corporation and a team of students, mm -hmm. and they all work together on a project for the association. Mm. On on projects that, like you know, the founders of the association are not necessarily comfortable with like accounting, uh, internet site, marketing, all okay. the things that, that are very useful. The transmission from the founders to the next mm -hmm. generation. So, uh, and that's everybody's happy uh, mm -hmm. to to participate because the association you know has smart people working for them. Uh, the, 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 the employees of corporations mm -hmm. are happy to do that as a pro bono and mm -hmm. the students are very happy to do that because it, it puts them in contact with the NGOs and with uh, the professional board. Excellent. So this is a good program. And the last one is a smaller program that we, we, we do, uh, we co-organize with the foundation of Prince Albert in Monaco. And that's a, a yearly meeting of, uh, of major philanthropists mm -hmm. in the world. It, it, it's uh, Chatham House rule, so no, okay. no press. Mm -hmm. uh, for the, the recipient. Yes. And he has a big yes, a and it, prize. So you, with the no, Prince of Monaco, you give away a prize. No, no, yeah, we, yeah, we have two prizes. <laughs> we have two prizes. <laughs> two prizes, okay. No, so, so this is the Monaco meeting. And uh, so usually we have, uh, it's around two speakers. And okay. For example, this year we had, it was about uh, one planet, one health. Mm -hmm. 
mm. about the crisis. And we had uh, Laurence Tubiana, who was the chair of the Paris conference, and Johan Rockström, mm -hmm. who's a, a major Swedish scientist that uh, just issued a, a movie on the, you, you know, the climate change, mm -hmm. uh, it's called Breaking Boundaries. Mm -hmm. I, I, would, I, I would encourage a, a, any of you to, to see it. And, and then there is a peer-to-peer -peer discussion. So, Excellent. and then we we award the prize to, a, to 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 an innovative philanthropic project. Excellent. And this year it was to a hospital in Uganda. Uh, of this wonderful man that uh, helps the, the pygmy mm -hmm. pygmy population, which is one of the poorest in the world for disease, COVID, women. So. Excellent. Yeah, and, and, and the last uh, project is uh, but that, that which preceded the foundation is the Tocqueville Prize okay, that is awarded okay. to an internal ju international jury to uh, somebody who wrote in the legacy of Tocqueville. Mm -hmm. uh, and the last awardee was uh, Henry Kissinger. Wow. He was amazing. 95 at the time. Oh, my word. was awarded <laughs> by President Giscard d'Estaing, was also an old man. Who, wow. Uh, died uh, later, not, not, not very long ago. And Henry Kissinger is such an, an impressive man. He, uh, he stood up and he said, I want to apologize for two things. The first one is I'm going to be seated. And the second one is I'm going to do my speech in English. <laughs> and then, you know, I remember, if you allow me this, uh, this, this personal memory, uh, he had a, you know, paper like a 20 page uh, on his uh, knees to uh, for his speech, mm -hmm. he didn't have one look at it. Wow! And it is this incredible speech, uh, uh, you know, for twenty minutes. Wow! Uh, that, that was really impressive. So, this is what we do with the Tobin Foundation. Amazing! And, uh, we're happy to have this opportunity to uh, present it. Amazing! So we're going to yeah. turn to questions in just a few minutes. So begin to um, contribute your questions to the chat box, if you will. And just to recap really quickly, there there are three ish maybe four four main core pillars of what the Tocqueville Foundation does one is the Tocqueville Conversations yeah. the Tocqueville Challenge yeah. and the Tocqueville Prize and then there's two prizes though right <laughs> no, 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 well, it's more, one goes with Monaco and okay. the, the big prize is uh, okay so one's in partnership with the Prince of Monaco yeah. and one's the, uh, the one that Henry Kissinger got the big bigger prize right. okay exactly. excellent right. He's now okay the, excellent uh, new president of the so if there are people um, from universities or institutions on this call, um, be thinking about ways that your university could potentially contribute and partner with the Tocqueville Challenge. Um, and I'll just take that opportunity to say thank you to the Lilly School of Philanthropy at Indiana University for being a partner on this event and helping uh, promote it and sponsor it. Um, and thank and, you for all organizers. Yes, for, thank you to Bravery Angels. Angels and, 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 uh, your initiative. Yeah. Uh, so thank yeah. you. Yeah. And it's wonderful that we're all kind of, if we kind of embody each of our endeavors, civil society, and we're mm -hmm. here talking about it and trying to promote yeah, and civil we should, society. We as should well. absolutely partner and unify our efforts. Yes. I think our fight, our, our fight is a good one. Yes. And a very necessary one. Yeah. Very useful. One. Yeah, so in terms of ways people can get involved and support your work, I'll volunteer. You can you can donate to the Tocqueville Foundation. Well, uh, Elizabeth will or Ibram will provide a link to that. Um, follow them and engage them on social media mm -hmm. to stay updated. You can yeah. also sign up for the Tocqueville Conversations newsletter as they're, they just hired a brand new CEO who's young and vivacious and very excited about engaging younger and new audiences. So really excited Absolutely. about that. He's Thibault, starting, Thibault, Thibault Lafont. Thibault Lafont. We, we look forward to working Parfait. with him. He, he's, he's already worked for, for, for five years in NGOs. He's a very energetic and energetic Excellent. and bright young man. So. Excellent. So kind of a new yeah. era for the Tocqueville yeah. Foundation. Yes. Yeah. Very yes. exciting. Yeah. Very exciting. So those are uh, a few ways that to, to, that that people on our call can can stay engaged. Any other ways that you can think of that people can support your work, contribute, stay engaged with your you work? You know, we are, we are happy to to speak with people. Yes. And I think our encounter was a very nice one. You just called us and, and, and said... I did. Uh, I emailed and yeah. said I'd love to... Yeah, and I'm writing said, a book. Uh, and, yeah. yeah, I'm Alexandra. And yes. I, you know, I'm very interested in what you do in yes. Manchester. Yes. Uh, uh, and here we are, uh, here we are. talking to you. Oh. So <laughs> this is this, this is uh, what's great in life, you know, it's this, true. Country, mm -hmm. this kind of a contest. It's true. Yeah. Wonderful. So I have a question from Constance Sterling Engman. 
She says she visited France in fall of 2019 and speaks French. And many French citizens seemed perplexed about American government and politics. How do French people in general perceive American society now, would you say? How do French people perceive American society? She visited America, uh, she visited France oh, and okay. was a lot of French people didn't seem to know much about America. <laughs> so how, how do you think that French people perceive America today? Um, that, that, that's a good question. I, I think <laughs> everybody knows America in, uh, in, in Europe and in France. And everybody knows about America. You know, the major features of American politics, of American culture. Of Maybe American not the best features films, of America, too. Maybe, you know. Uh, yeah. And movies and uh, yeah. so so he, uh, and th th there is a, a thing a close relationship. Now it, it is true that uh, it's, it's like I guess the other way uh, is also true that uh, American people know about Europe about France. Not too much. Uh, not too much. <laughs> yes, uh, because <laughs> people know that we have a common story that we had uh, Lafayette and uh, Tocqueville and uh, uh, so. Um, I think that there, there was a, uh, uh, everybody knows, of course, that uh, America uh, came to rescue, uh, you know, liberty in Europe mm -hmm. twice mm -hmm. uh, during the 20th century. Uh, everybody knows about, uh, you, you know, all the successes of America, be it, you know, be it uh, Facebook, uh, Tesla, Elon Musk, and, Tesla. Uh, the, the big foundation like Bill Gates, you know, all this is part of the, uh, uh, of what people know about America. Now, I think that people know probably less, a, a bit less about American politics. However, there it was a big shock uh, here on January 6th. Mm. Uh, to hear that uh, you know people assaulted the the, the, the capital, uh, so, so people knew about Trump, of course, and uh, because mm. he was pretty vocal. Mm. I, I mean, it was difficult to ignore him <laughs> uh, in in the you know in the way he was doing politics and in the way he uh, uh, in his relationship with the lights. I mean, I mean there, there was some uh, some bumps. Yeah. Um, but but there was a, a, a big shock on um, on June six. Uh, our our president immediately reacted, uh, mm. actually city, uh, citing Alexis Tocqueville in his brief uh, mm. well, the same remark. Evening. Wow! Uh, yeah, uh, and uh, so I, I think it's a it's a very friendly relationship, but uh, or family relationship. Uh, but uh, as all friend of family mm -hmm. relationship, you sometimes mm -hmm. have some. Uh, some disputes. Mm -hmm. but, but I think uh, there is very strong ties, uh, long lasting uh, friendship between France and the US. And mm -hmm. I think that's really strong. Mm -hmm. I mean, we feel it particularly here, as you said, with the land in beaches and all, all that. I think that's yes. very present. I yes. Think. And, and well, um, I think there might be some, some, from time to time, some un understanding. Mm. But, but I think there is a, I would say, a deep trust between. Yes, France and the, and the US. this. This goes beyond this place, Alexandra. I mean, mm -hmm. th this place is has always been extremely pro-American. Mm -hmm. But the Chateau I, or France? The Chateau. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> and, and, and it's inhabited. Yeah. yeah. But it's yeah. also true. Uh, no, that was a joke. <laughs> it's also true for the Stephen was saying for the, the whole country yeah. and I think the whole continent. Yes. I think even, even for the U.S. Constitution, I mean, French people have been working on. I, I think it's really an intricate relation yes. between these two countries. Yes. Thank you, Constance, for that question. Uh, I have another question from Rita Chisholm, which is, what was the reaction, if any, of the citizens of France to Alexis de Tocqueville's writings? And were there any movements in France that were spawned from his writing? How was how was Tocqueville received in France when he published Democracy in America, and what influence do they have? Any parties, political parties, movements that came about because of Tocqueville? I think he would have yeah, received a very good, very well received. Very well received. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, no, he he uh, absolutely uh, he he was he was a skyrocketing success hmm. uh, in the whole world. The whole uh, world. In the whole world. In 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 the U.S. of course, in France, in Europe, in Russia. Yeah. 
it was it was it was a, a worldwide success um, because the analysis uh, was was smart it was right as I was saying it came from factual mm -hmm. observations um, and then so so Tocqueville was uh, very famous uh, when when he lived as 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 a writer and a thinker more than as a politician mm -hmm. because he, he was in politics but pretty briefly, and he was very disappointed. And then he, he slashed the door when uh, the, the, the president Napoleon Bonaparte mm -hmm. uh, did a coup and, and reestablished the second empire. He mm -hmm. was, he was, so that stopped his uh, political career. Mm -hmm. uh, and then he was um, uh, sort of um, less uh, present <laughs> And less known uh, because because of the the success of the Marxist ideas, mm. uh, people do not realize uh, all the time that uh, Alexis Tocqueville and Karl Marx they lived at the same were time. contemporaries. Right. The, the revolutions they lived, of 1848 are the one the same year that exact, Karl Marx published the Manifesto, the Communist Manifesto. Exactly, the they were yes. they, they were living at the same time. Yes. And then, you know, with all what happened in, in Russia and then later in, mm -hmm. in Asia and in China, in, uh, we, we, with uh, the diffusion uh, and, and broadening of uh, communist and Marxist ideas, yeah. Tocqueville was a bit left aside. Uh, and then he, uh, he was re not rediscovered, but, but, but put on the front of the scene again by uh, intellectual and academics like mm -hmm. uh, Raymond Aron, François mm -hmm. Furet, and of course, all the uh, uh, American academics. Mm -hmm. Well, he, he, was, he was always as famous in, in America. Mm -hmm. uh, and when the Marxist ideas, uh, the Marxist experience just uh, crashed, mm -hmm. uh, Tocqueville was, uh, became famous again in this part of the world mm -hmm. uh, for a very simple reason, mm -hmm. uh, which is that his uh, thoughts came from factual observations. Mm. Uh, and even if they were, uh, if I could say more modest than what Karl Marx tried to do to explain the whole evolution of, mm -hmm. of mankind, uh, Karl's ideas were much more abstract. Mm. They were not founded. It was a theory mm -hmm. uh, of you know, capitalism and uh, uh, exploitation of, you know, by the capitalism. Mm -hmm. That was not based with, with no uh, real or 100% factual base. Mm -hmm. Of course, there were abusers and he observed things, but the, the, the theory that he drew from that was, I think, more, much more abstract and, and proved less true than Tobin's observations. Mm -hmm. And it's really interesting, Rita. Thank you for that great question, because it's interesting that Tocqueville's work was really well received everywhere, but especially in France, because um, he's not always very flattering of France in his comparison. Sometimes he's critical of France. And, he's, he's very and, critical. Yes. Yeah. And so, uh, interestingly enough, uh, you know, a century before when Montesquieu was writing, mm -hmm. everyone in France hated the spirit of the laws because similarly, Montesquieu was critical of the monarchy and, and the character of the people and different things. And Mo all of Montesquieu's books ended up on the banned book list, the Catholic mm -hmm. Church and <laughs> So, um, and, and it, relatedly, uh, it's interesting that Tocqueville had such um, a glowing and can yet candid observation in America, and it was really well received there because not every foreigner that went to America was so glowing and so kind of uh, they were almost like too candid. So two other famous travelers to America were Charles Dickens, and mm -hmm. he wrote his Notes on America which are very critical and very scathing. Uh, and, and Frances Trollope, she's also an English woman who went to America also. And, and right around the time, like within, within 20 or 30 years that Tocqueville went to America and, and very critical, like it thought there was nothing redeeming about the American project. And it's almost interesting that they were, maybe they were too close. Like it's the, that the English people writing about, you know, the child that got away, you know, and they, they didn't want to find anything redeeming in America. Whereas again, Tocqueville had this healthy, detachment, the objectivism mm -hmm. that you've been talking about, that he was able to stand it, it, apart it, critically. And, it, you know. Exactly. Well, he was very admirative of, uh, you know, what, what 
the American immigrants uh, created mm. as a political system. It was, mm -hmm. it was something that uh, was completely new in the world. And, and he thought that was the future. Mm -hmm. But uh, as you said, he was objective. He was also critical, mm -hmm. like, for example, on slavery, right. on, on the Indians. The Native Americans, exactly. He Native saw Americans. Andrew Jackson pushing American, Native Americans off their land. And he was like, this is yeah. horrible. He was yeah. horrified. Yeah, so he that. was. Yes. I think that the, 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 what describes the, 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 the best is objectivism. Yes. yes. Is observation and objectivism. Exactly. Thank you for that question, Rita. Fantastic. Our next question will be from Johan. I'm probably going to butcher his last name, Spirglad. Uh, with the question, what did Alexis de Tocqueville admire most about America when he visited here in 1831, and what caused him concern? Okay, so the question is, what did uh, Alexis de Tocqueville admire most, and what caused him the most concern? Uh, so that's the question. So really quickly, audience, if you want to win your own copy of Alexis de Tocqueville's Democracy in America, um, you can be entered into a contest to win by following the Tocqueville Foundation and, and Braver Angels and also tweeting about this event. What did you like about this event? Tell us your thoughts. And so tweet about the event, uh, follow the accounts that Abraham or, or Elizabeth are going to put in the chat, and you can, you can win your own uh, copy, the Liberty Fund translation of Democracy in America. So what did Tocqueville, what, what did he like the most? What was he most concerned about when he came to America? Yeah. But I would say what he liked the most, I would say was the buoyant civil society. The vibrant civil society, exactly, exactly. Uh, I think that would be what we Yeah, 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 I, that's right. I, I agree, the vibrant civil society yes. and the role of women. Yes, And on this American as well, women. Yeah, yeah, he was a precursor uh, because he noted, uh, he was very impressed the way, the way American women uh, were taking part in the, uh, you know, in the life of the couple, not only raising the kids, yes. but also uh, taking part into uh, the, 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 uh, the projects, the, the economic uh, situation of, yes. uh, of the family, uh, and, and how active they were mm -hmm. as compared to European women. So that was uh, something that uh, struck him. They were, they, uh, also, were they were educated. They, they were, were and absolutely. they were empowered, and they, they weren't just complacent to their husbands. They yeah. were they were active active parts indeed. of the household. Yeah, indeed. he was really impressed. Yeah, by he that. was impressed yes. by that. As we as as we discuss, he was also uh, convinced that um, this political system that uh, the pioneers uh, uh, created was the, the, the step for the future. Uh, for, for the reasons that we said, which is, uh, he, he said that the, 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 the desire for equal, equality was mm -hmm. something that, that could not be stopped. Mm -hmm. uh, and he admired that, the way that concerned him, that, 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 that concerned that him but at the same time, he admired the way that uh, the, the, the American system uh, you know, install liberty mm -hmm. as, as, as a counter, as a, as, as a counterweight for this. Uh, as we said, with the checks and balances mm -hmm. and the, the judicial power, the media. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so he was very admirative of the, 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 the balance of the, of the system. Now, what concerned him was, yes, that, as you said, uh, the, the, uh, the way equality could lead to a, to a bad system. Uh, he, he was also critical, as we said, of uh, uh, you know the condition of uh, of African people yes. of uh, Native Americans. Yes. Uh, he, he was pretty pretty hard on this, and mm -hmm. he he was a humanist. I mean, I mean, he you should have read the page. You, you probably have. Sorry, read the pages he wrote after visiting England, and 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 the factories of the Industrial Revolution. Mm. That that you 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 could easily attribute these pages to Karl Marx. So mm. What we are talking about. Because he was so shocked at the, wow. the conditions of the workers. Wow, that's wonderful. Mm. Thank you. We have about 10 minutes left. Our next question is from Aaron Tao. And it is Can you talk about the Tocqueville paradox? 
that social unrest grows even as material conditions get better and how that may relate to the woke slash intersectionality phenomenon in America. Hmm. So he, uh, Aaron asked about, it's, it's called, I haven't heard this before, but the Tocqueville mm -hmm. paradox that mm -hmm. as material, um, um, yeah, yes. as we become more prosperous, yes. social unrest also increases. And he asks yeah, how yeah. that relates to maybe some of the culture wars that we were talking no, about earlier, yeah. cancel culture. And that, that, that's a very interesting question. Uh, there, I can see two, two answers. The first one is, what he observed about equality. That the smaller inequalities become, the more unbearable uh, they are in, in people's minds. Yeah. So people in the ancient world where, where you had uh, like uh, the caste, you know, the uh, groups of people yeah. like the aristocracy, yes. the peasants, you, you the could not- system. The yeah. class system. Yes. You could not so easily uh, No switch. social mobility, yeah. Yeah. exactly. So, you you could be happy as a as a you know prosperous farmer mm -hmm. or as a as an industrialist mm -hmm. you know being an, an aristocrat and well that, that of course evolved uh, very quickly um, but but this is this is one of the reasons is, uh, you know when inequalities get smaller ugh, people. Mm -hmm. They hate it. They hate, because they hate you it. see how you could get the place of the mm -hmm. other one. Exactly. Mm -hmm. when, whether there is a big difference, you, you don't see yourself clearly. Yeah. E exactly. So this is the first uh, reason that was analyzed in democracy in America. Mm. Another very interesting reason that was more analyzed in, um, I think, in the Ancien Regime as well, if, I, if, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and, and, and this is something that we Stephanie and I went to China a few years ago mm. with, uh, for, for, and, and we met uh, Chinese academics. And believe it or not, uh, Tocqueville is, is extremely widely read in China. Wow, I didn't realize and that. And he's reading... It was a mandatory list of all the uh, fonctionnaires in China. Wow. Yeah, yeah the mayor of Beijing. Tocqueville. Yeah, Amazing. to read Tocqueville. Amazing. Why? Amazing. Why? 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 Not because of democracy in America, as you can imagine. Wow. Because... Tocqueville said, and this is the answer to, uh, to, to the question, Tocqueville said people don't uh, make revolution, they don't uh, do a revolution when they are starving and we have no, when they have no access to culture. Mm. They uh, start revolutions when they are eating correctly and have some access to culture mm. and some access to you know, what could be the, the new political system or whatever. Uh, and I think this is very true, and I think that the Chinese were very interested in this. That was uh, eight, seven, eight uh, years ago. Eight yeah. Wow. They were very interested because there, there was a tension uh, between uh, the, uh, the modernists, if I mm. would say so, around Deng Xiaoping, uh, who were saying, okay, we are in the middle of the river. Mm -hmm. We have uh, provided uh, some economic welfare mm -hmm. and well-being. So now politically, we cannot stay where we are and we have to move ahead as well. Mm -hmm. And you had the old guard, the Maoist mm -hmm. from uh, President Mao, who are saying, oh my God, we've, we've gone much too far and we must backtrack. Wow. Otherwise, we will have a problem. So, uh, and uh, the communist rulers at that time were interested in reading Ancien Regime mm. because of this analysis mm. and how they could adapt it to their to the Chinese system. Wow. They wanted to avoid the revolution. Yes. So, so, so keep, people, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. keep people like in such a discomfort that yeah. they're not so comfortable that they're going to plan a revolution, not so educated yeah. that yeah. they're going to. That's so interesting. Yeah. Absolutely. Wow. Thank so you, Aaron. Not, no, it's another story with uh, Xi Jinping. Okay. Uh, Thank you, Aaron. Excellent question. So I have a question from Beckett Rita. Says, <laughs> <laughs> I apologize to everyone if I'm slaughtering your last names. I'm trying my best. What is it like to grow up with democracy in America in your family? Is it a presence in your life from your childhood? And does it shape your family in any particular way? 
That's really interesting. Uh, how is how is Democracy in America taught to you? Were you forced to read it from an early age? Was it just talked about? How was it in your family and in your life growing up? Should, should I answer that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, from my point of view, it's just a huge opening to the world. Because having an author like that in the in the house, let's say, which I discovered through getting married to Jean Vio, it really gives you opportunity to speak to anyone in the world. In fact. It, it's an incredible openness to the, to the rest of the world. I find. So did you have it spoon fed, made to memorize the, the book, right? Like from an early age or how is it? No, 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 there was no, how pre you, how you <laughs> no okay. pressure. Was no pressure, okay. From that, from that okay. No, 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 what, what I was, it was born in the uh, <laughs> democracy in America on my bedside table. Really? <laughs> well, I suppose, yeah. <laughs> I, I suppose, but no, there, there was no pressure from uh, uh, our parents, and I think they did it rightly uh, because democracy in America is 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 not a reading for a, an eight year old. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's it's a bit it's a bit too serious or too too, too complicated for young kids, I guess. Mm. Uh, no, what, what I remember as being very interesting is that um, at the time, now all the for those. Uh, our auditors interested, all the manuscripts of uh, Alexis de Tocqueville that we have here and on the, are on the, net, on the internet mm -hmm. uh, with free access. Mm. Uh, so uh, people don't need to come here. I, I, I mean, they like to come here mm -hmm. to, because they like to see the place and, and they are moved to see the place. Mm -hmm. uh, but they don't need to, but at that time there was no internet mm. uh, and people, so, uh, very nice memory I have is that we've met a lot of uh, uh, very prestigious American academics and university people who came mm. here to study Tugby. Mm. And they were fascinating people. I remember as a kid, you know, talking with them and uh, uh, discovering America mm. through, uh, and through, through their eyes. Mm -hmm. And that was, uh, that was great. Uh, and then... Um, as a young man, I, I, I've been studying and living in the US for, so that was a, a great experience, but uh, we, we feel that, you know, this legacy is, uh, and, uh, you know, it's just it's, it's no, uh, uh, how, how would I say that? It is not um, something I, I, I deserve probably, but mm. I was just born. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> where I was born, yes. uh, but but we feel that it's a, it, it's a great legacy. Um, it's it's a beautiful legacy mm -hmm. because Tocqueville was uh, Alexis Tocqueville was a wonderful man, uh, and it's a smart legacy. And 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 although you know he, clearly he was a smart guy of the mm -hmm. family, and, and mm -hmm. <laughs> there's no people of his caliber right now in the family. <laughs> But we are doing our best to keep his legacy alive. And yeah. uh, as Stephanie was saying, it's a, it's a wonderful opportunity to, to, to meet people all around the world. And I am always moved when I see people coming here and, and being so moved to visit you know, his grave, to visit his cabinet, mm -hmm. to, to see his manuscript. Mm -hmm. So it, it, I think it's a great, uh, it's a great luck. Really? And I would encourage your auditors to come over here to stay in the house. And yes, you can house. stay here in yeah. the Tocqueville Tower. Yes. There is part of the house which is open for guests. So you can come here and discover the, the much, area. Much more comfortable than our part. <laughs> <laughs> um, and an interesting question about how you were taught Tocqueville, Jean Guillaume, because um, just at lunch, Stephanie and I were talking about uh, what are ways that Tocqueville should and can be taught today? Like, how can we take democracy in America and turn it into curriculum and resources for teachers to teach civics in America? Mm -hmm. Again, best book on America, best book in democracy. That's that we should utilize it and, and you know cultivate it and 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 translate it into resources that can be really easily used by teachers today. And and what would that look like? We were just kind of exploring that. Um, that question a little bit. No, that's so. uh, that's a very good point. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you, you're you're talking about uh, schools, right? Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, yeah, because universities are equipped, if right. I could say to. Yeah, but but, but uh, Tocqueville is not really studied um, 
at school level here. Uh, some, sometimes in the last year, uh, th there are several topics in the last 10 years, we had, th there were several um, subjects, mm -hmm. topics that uh, were, were given to students for the baccalaureate, which is the, uh, the, the exam that ending the mm -hmm. school studies in France. So, um, but in the US, it's really, I understand that he studied in the, the school system and yes. it, it might be, yeah. Yeah, it might be a great project. Okay, all the yeah. high schools you study the green? No, no, no. So, um, I don't think so. Well, but they, but they yeah. should. And yeah. and know how yeah. could how could you know the foundation help create resources that make it easier to do that to, for teachers yeah. to teach? Yeah, them. you're just talking about yeah. that. As yeah. we are saying, education is a key. Uh, Absolutely, a key part of the solution. Key, key to democracy. Of the solution. Yeah. Essential, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Um, so I think that's all the time that we have. But Stephanie and Jean Guillaume, it's been a privilege to be here talking with you about one of my favorite thinkers and historical figures from history in his historic home. Oh. You know, he he walked on these grounds and it's, it's incredible yeah he's having a look at us he's he's here with us exactly yeah. and you know to be with with these early the first editions of his book is just extraordinary and uh, i want to thank um ibram and, and and jessica and um everyone who helped on the tech side of this as well as braver angels john thank you for your thoughtful words thanks to the to the lily school of philanthropy for being a partner on this event as well and and one last time if you'd want you'd like to win your own copy of democracy in america this liberty fund translation um please uh tweet at us at the social media handles and, and follow the tocqueville foundation mm -hmm. uh to stay engaged with their work and um, maybe share the tocqueville uh, links one more time um jessica abraham so people can access their more information um sign up for their newsletters donate ways to stay engaged as well mm -hmm. um yes yeah, stay here come stay in the tower yeah, exactly. exactly yes exactly it's, it's magnificent here yeah. um but it's just been an absolute privilege to have this conversation and to learn more i, I learned so much from you about about Tocqueville the man, who he was, and what made the, the man behind the book and the ideas that are so famous, but what made him, it was just so enlightening and so helpful. So thanks to you both. For, no, thank you. Nice, it was yeah. our pleasure. And getting in contact with us and yes. coming all the way to here. Yes, our pleasure. So <laughs> and, and thank you to all who had the patience to uh, listen. Yes, right uh, to the I end. I hope you all exactly. so, uh, very much. learned a few things. Exactly. Yeah. Thanks to everyone and have a wonderful rest of your Saturday.